I'm a business builder. You know, think fear is, oh, it's a dream killer. Like I'm an aged out soccer mom who did up things throughout my life. I've never really worked for anyone else. Other women are doing it, so I'm sure I can figure this out. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. I am Christina Mascari. And I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And we have another YouTuber for you here today, guys. We love talking with YouTubers and just breaking down how they started their channel, how they got it going. YouTube is one of the hardest ones, I think, to be successful at. And our guest today is just killing it. And the thing that I love about her is that she's over 50. And so we have just been talking to over 50 creators. And you you know what? Like retirement, you're not done. There is so much more you can do. So we are so excited to welcome to the podcast today, Kimberly Montgomery from Pretty Over 50. Oh my gosh. I just want to start off by saying (laughs) thank you ladies so much. I'm so excited to talk with you today. So I'm happy to be here. Oh, we are so happy to have you. And I have to tell you, I actually found your channel a few years ago, really, because I was searching for makeup over 40 makeup and you were one of the first people that came up and I loved your content so much that I have come back to it for suggestions over time and I've just loved to watch you grow so we are just thrilled to have you here today and to get kind of an inside look at your journey as a YouTuber so let's start from the beginning and talk to us about how you ended up a YouTuber. What got you started on this content creation journey? (laughs) That is such a great (laughs) question because I never, ever would have dreamed that I would end up being a YouTuber. I spent my life, my career was as an illustrator for the gift and paper products industry. So this is like a complete left turn for me. But I'll tell you, ladies, how it started it actually happened, and if you're over 50, you have had this experience, most likely. One day, I looked in the mirror, and I said, oh my, who's that old lady? <laughs> and it was that moment in which it all came crashing down on me that I wasn't 27 anymore, like I felt like in my head. And I looked at my reflection, and I thought, goodness gracious, what happened? That was the first thing. And then the the thought that came along pretty quickly after that was, I wonder if I can fix this. Because I had never, ever really done skincare in my life or makeup, just a little bit of makeup. I had a, you know, a career. I had kids. I had a life. It was not something that was the focus of my energy or my interests. But when I looked in the mirror and I saw my face, you know, my real face, I thought, I wonder if I can fix this. And then the second thought was, okay, if I can fix it, that would be a really good thing to know because I wasn't going to go get Botox or fillers or lasers or anything. I was going to do everything at home because I thought if it works, I want to make sure that cost is not a barrier for the process. So I was thinking through this whole thing, and then I thought, you know what? I should start a YouTube channel and document the whole process and see if it works. Because I really didn't know if it was going to work. I thought it might work. So I started a YouTube channel way back when. It's been five years now. (laughs) And I launched into this whole skincare journey. And the premise from the beginning was, we're going to see if I can fix my face or improve my skin It's going to be all affordable at-home products and devices, no doctor's appointments, no slipping in anywhere to get a little something, something. It was all going to be organic at home. And I launched in and I started in and I made every mistake in the book. Of course I did because I knew nothing about skincare. But over the years, I've pretty much found out what works. And two years into it, this is a good story, ladies, you'll enjoy this. (laughs) Two years into it, I did a two-year anti-aging skincare video results, and I put my picture up when I first started, and I put my two-year picture up, and so many ladies were so impressed and left lovely comments, but the most important part is so many people said, you are just one of those lying influencers, and you've had a facelift. 
Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. And I thought that was the very best compliment <laughs> I could possibly get. And what happened is I ended up proving that yes, you really can dramatically impact your skin regardless of your age with at-home products and devices. So that's my YouTube story. It wasn't intentional. It was just, I love a good project. I thought fixing my skin could be a good project and we found out it worked. Well, and it's something that everyone can relate to. And I love the story of you weren't an expert. You were not a skincare expert when you started. You just said, hey, this is the journey I'm going to go on. And if I'm going on this journey, I bet there's other women my age that are on this journey, too. And let's go together and let's figure out. And the smart thing about that, too, is you're like, let's make it affordable and accessible to everyone. I mean, what a plan. You yeah. know, and, and I'm curious. Before you started YouTube, were you already kind of a fan of YouTube, watching YouTube videos, or? You know, that's a good question. I think that I did watch YouTube in different ways, obviously for information, like a resource, like how do I do this one thing? So I did watch it a little bit, but I can't say that I was looking at channels to see how they did it or how they were successful. It was more just driven by looking up an answer, or looking up information. So a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, so the skin care journey is one whole story, but I want to go a little bit deeper into how did you actually start recording yourself? And were, were you just using YouTube as a resource of how do I create a YouTube channel? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I'm not really sure how I put all the parts and pieces together. Because I can't say that I'm very techie. I'm just like I'm an aged out soccer mom who did other things throughout my life. But I thought, you know, other women are doing it. So I'm sure I can figure this out. And I'll tell you, ladies, when I first started, it was so humble. I was, you know, the kids were grown. They were gone. I was living in a tiny little studio apartment overlooking the Pacific Ocean, in Northern California, very, very rustic, but I was in the middle of the redwoods. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I had a space in my little studio that was literally like four feet wide. And it was like right at the end of the kitchen. It was the only space that I could put up like a sheet behind me and put a ring light in front of me. And I bought a camera and I sort of figured out how to work it. And I just launched in. I don't think I was very good in the beginning. <laughs> I just turned the camera on and started filming and hoped for the best. That's really amazing because, you know, we talk about this a lot on the podcast that fear can often keep people from just like you said, turning on the camera and getting started. Why? Do you think you were able or were there any, did you have no fear? Were you pretty much just like, oh, I'm going to put it out there and see what happens? Or were there fears that you did have to push aside for that initial leap to start recording yourself and putting it out there? You know, that's such a great question because I think fear is, you know, it's a dream killer out there. I wasn't fearful and I'll tell you why. Because I had always worked for myself. I was an illustrator and I had built a business in the gift and paper products industry from the ground up and had almost a 30-year career in that industry in my own business. So I understood how to build a business or what it takes to build a business. And I knew that you start from square one and you just keep pushing through. So it never really dawned on me that I wouldn't get at least some subscribers because I thought the journey was interesting enough. I thought most women my age, and I was 62 when I started. I'm 67 now. I'm almost 68. So I'm there's a there's a gasp right now. Yeah, from our I audience. know. Really, when I watched your video the other day, and you're like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna be 70 soon," I was like, "What?" Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm two years from 70. So wow. what I did, and I'll, here's the funny story. I was living in the same town as my, my daughter. And when I told her I was going to start a YouTube channel and do skincare, the look of pity on her face <laughs> was, was so apparent. And I tease her about that now. And she goes, well, you know, Mom, 
<laughs> so I started in, and ladies, I'll tell you what, you know, I was younger then. I was doing three videos a week. Ooh, wow. Way back when. I was doing three videos a week, and I was doing all my own editing. I didn't, you know, I was buying products at that point because no company was going to send me products when I had 12 subscribers. And it really was just a very, very humble thing. But I thought, I think this is important information. I thought if if we really can dramatically improve our skin without going into a doctor's office, and, and one of, the, I have to be honest, and one of the things that really irritated me was plastic surgeons were saying all over the place, you cannot impact your skin without a facelift. You really can't do much without a facelift. And I was just sassy enough and stubborn enough to say, yeah, we'll find out about that. We'll see about that. So that was part of my motivation is I do feel I felt like we have a lot more control over the healthiness of our body. And that includes the healthiness of our skin. than we're being told. So that was a push for me. It was a push for me to make sure that if it did work, that the information got out to as many people as possible, as many ladies as possible. Because if you can really, really dramatically improve your skin, which just makes you feel a little bit better during your day, that's good information. So I started in, I learned how to film, I learned how to get that little card out of the camera and stick it into my computer, <laughs> and I learned how to edit and I bought products, and I had no idea what I was doing. And I made every mistake with skincare in the beginning, every single mistake. But that was really good news, because every time I made a mistake, it was information about what did work. So every step of the way, it was good information. I ended up having fun with it. And then slowly but surely, I started getting ladies that would stop by and pop in and say hello and come back week after week. And then five years down the road, here we are. Well, so what was your journey to monetization? How long did it end up taking you before you were part of that YouTube partner program? Yeah, that's that's a good question. It, it cracks me up. Honestly, ladies, I'll have someone watch one of my videos and in the comments below say, well, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm like, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> I I think it took me, and I, gosh, I'm not even really remembering. I think it took me about six months okay, before I got monetized. It might have been less. You know, the criteria was even less back then. It wasn't like I, you know, came out of the gate and was monetized in 30 days. It just wasn't like that. And I was posting on Instagram very regularly. I was doing three videos a week. I mean, I was working at it. It was a, it was a gig for me. And I think about six months, I started getting monetized. And, you know, you know, it wasn't six months. Now that I think about it, thank you for reminding me. I don't think I made a nickel for the first year. Oh, really? I think I first, I think I pretty much worked that first year for almost nothing. And if I did make any money, it all went out to buying products. Yeah. You know, so really? there there really wasn't an out. Because I remember telling my daughter, you know, honey, You got to, when you're building a business, you got to recognize that in the beginning, it's not glamorous. I worked for nothing for a year, but once it started rolling in, then the income started increasing and I had companies that would offer me sponsorships. And so things sort of turned around and it's been a, a nice little, nice little gig for me. Was there a particular video that kind of like set things in motion to start gaining more subscribers than that? Or was it just the slow, steady consistency of what you were doing? It was the first, actually, for me. Now, the interesting thing is, is that when you start YouTube and you're in a particular genre, and I don't know if this happened to you, but you kind of meet other gals or I met other gals that were starting their channels about the same time. So we sort of created this little gang and we do collaborations together. So their viewers would get to know you and your viewers would get to know them. And so we had this sort of little group that was just really fun, but about, gosh, and I can't even remember 
what month it was, I had a video end up going kind of, you know, sort of viral. I think that word is overused, but I literally started gaining 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 subscribers a month. Wow. I mean, it was big. Yeah. And that, it, it, the weirdest, it was the strangest video. It was face shaving. Yes. Yeah. I marked that down. <laughs> and like the us older people need to know about face shaving. I yes. remember the first time I heard about that. It was a college student that told me I was on a, on a bachelorette party. It was my friend's younger cousin. She's in college and she's like, oh yeah, everybody shaves their face. I'm like, that is going to ruin your face and you're going to get dark hairs and da 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 da. Listen to the kids sometimes. Know. They know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this face shaping video just took off and I couldn't figure out why it was so popular because I really didn't understand the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. But then I went to Google and I typed in face shaving over 50 and the number one hit was my video on Google. So that and I went, oh, OK, now I get it. <laughs> Power of Google. Power of Google Power partnered of Google. with YouTube. I know. So that was really, and it really kept my channel growing for quite a time. And one thing I noticed is the gals that I was hanging with in the beauty space, the over 50 beauty space, my channel really took off because I could see that theirs, theirs grew more steadily over time, whereas mine just shoom, took off. And they still haven't caught up. Not because their content isn't great. It is. It's just that that one little algorithm boost really pushed my channel into bigger numbers. Yeah, we ta we've talked about that a lot because that is why I'm where I'm at. And it was just one of those things that just hit at the right time. Um, what was I, it? What was well, it? the first one was like, I so I started out chalk painting. It was like a huge fad in 2013. And there were these waxes that you had to use. And there was this dark wax technique that was, it was pretty, you know, intense and very involved. And so I had a video where I was breaking down the whole process and this dark wax video, I had five videos up on my channel and it was mostly just because I was hosting them on a blog. This dark wax video took off and one day I looked up and it had 700,000 views. And I, I, I think I probably got monetized off of that. I didn't even know YouTubing was a thing back then. Um, but then it took like several years after that for me to be like, well, should I take this seriously? And I've been lucky to have, I think about three or four videos that have all hit a million. And those are the videos that sustain my channel. And then me just making content in between, like keeps it fresh, keeps growing my audience, keeps the brands involved. But it's really four videos that I make the majority of my AdSense money off of. And I thought that those days were done. Like I hadn't had a successful video like that in a couple of years. And I just had one in March that just took off and it's like 1.2 million now. And now oh, that one, that one is like sustaining. I'm like, okay, I can keep doing YouTube <laughs> because I have this video, but I was about, you know, to about to hang it up and be like, maybe my channel's done. Maybe my, the life of my channel is over. So I love hearing stories like that. Like you can't, those hero videos like will make a YouTube channel and will make you a YouTuber. But you can't have a hero video unless you show up and you make videos. So you have to be able to keep doing that in between those big videos like that. So I love yeah. hearing that story for, yeah. from you. Yeah. Well, so once you started earning an income from this and started getting brand partnerships, did you and started to realize this could be a full time income? How did you go for how have you gone forward from there? Like. Yeah. Do you just mainly do brand partnerships and AdSense or have you also along the way discovered other ways that you can monetize uh, what you're doing on YouTube? Yeah, those are such great questions because I do think that YouTube can be the core of a business, but I, I wanted to grow it bigger than that or have more, oh, ability to branch out than just YouTube. So Definitely the sponsorships, <clears throat> excuse me, are an important part of YouTube, but I'm so careful with those partnerships because integrity is so, it leads the way for me. And it really has to be a great product at a good price point with a company that has integrity, that has great customer service. I just... I, I can't do that, you know, 
just selling a product to sell a product thing. It just doesn't work for me. And as a YouTuber and those people that aren't YouTubers, I wake up every morning and I'm sure that you do too with, you know, 10, 12 emails wanting me to do a sponsorship for a product I've never tried, never used, never even heard of them. So there's, there's this constant pressure to do partnerships, which I just don't. I pretty much have the companies that I work with that we do throughout the year a, a certain number. And if a new company comes on, they really have to prove themselves. You know, they really have to show me that their product is really something unique and different. And in the skincare, healthy living space, I just, you know, it's like I, you got to come to market with something fresh and something new that solves a problem that no one else is addressing. Because if you can't do that, the other categories are, are covered. You know, we just don't need to keep duplicating product lines. And I see that a lot with skincare companies. There'll be a new company pop up every year because skincare is really, really profitable. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so easy for me to find very affordable products that really work because the ingredients in the the effective products are not expensive because they're they're naturally occurring ingredients. So that that is important to me. One of the, there's a couple of things that I have done with my channel. The first is is that. From the beginning, I started an email list. And if you're looking to start any business, oh my gosh, that email list is going to be golden. So my email list right now is huge. And I'll tell you, of all the things about my channel, the most popular thing is my Sunday morning email newsletter. Women grab their coffee, open up their computers or their phones, and they look forward to that Sunday morning email newsletter because it's all the cool things I found throughout the week. You know, the chatty girlfriend things that you would share with your friend if you were out having lunch. That's what goes in the Sunday morning email newsletter. So it is so popular. If that email does not go out at 9 a.m. Eastern time every Sunday morning, if it's 9.05, I'm getting emails like, are you okay? Everything okay? What's going on over there? So I started that email list. And from there, because my list is so large now, I thought, I I can do something with this. And what I decided is I wanted to put together a special sale that was exclusive to my viewers that would be promoted through that email list. And I could go to these different companies and say, I have this list of women, this huge list that are totally into skincare and healthcare, you know, and wellness. Can you offer me a special that's bigger and better or different than anything you offer anywhere else that's exclusive to my viewers, and I'll give you an entire month to promote that with my audience. And so that started out the big old super sale or boss event that we do once a month with a company that I love. I mean, these are companies that were built because the owner had such a passion for whatever it was. So now we do a monthly boss event, and that special is exclusive to my viewers only. And it is such a hit. A lot of the companies that I work with, that's their biggest month of the year, is that boss sale right there. And my viewers, it's such a win-win. I have viewers that are like, what's the next boss event? I can't wait. And they wait for the boss event. And that's when they stock up on that product for the whole year. So it's it's a winner for the manufacturers, the companies. It's a winner for the viewers. And it's fun for me because I'm able to provide something to my viewers that's a little bit better, a little bit different, and a little bit more valuable than just watching a YouTube video. Yeah, and you've made almost this exclusive club. Yes. For your view. And I'm, that's just like a great way to create community. And if you don't mind sharing, like, what is your open rate on that Sunday newsletter? Oh, gosh, it's like 50, 50, 55 oh. percent. You need it's, to be teaching a master class. Really, though, you, on email. So marketing. good. Because you're the first person we've spoken with that really has honed in on email marketing and is doing it well and having a lot of success there. So this is super interesting to me that now you're able to market your email list, this niche group of targeted customers to companies 
and then monetize that. I think that is so, so smart. And I Yeah, because you're not having to rely on the algorithm to show your video to people right. to get your code out. Like, yeah. you have your people. And I love, I just, you know, was watching a handful of your videos last night, just binging and preparing for today. And you always mention that newsletter. And you always mention just like what you mentioned, grab your coffee, we spend time together, we chit chat about all these things. And you make it you're like, I don't want to say selling, it's not selling, you're inviting people into community. And you do that in every single video. And I just was like, this is so smart. And I really haven't seen anybody do it. And it was just sparking ideas with me because I do have an email list, but we don't do a ton with it. And I don't ever promote it hardly ever in my videos. And I'm like, oh, this is a missed opportunity. So I just, yeah, it's just very cool. I mean, I've heard about email marketing, but not in this specific way from a YouTuber. So I love that you have two huge things going. And if YouTube shuts down tomorrow, you have this like huge successful thing built on the back end that you own. Yeah. Can you take us back to the beginning of your email list? And was this always the idea from the beginning of how you were going to use it? Or did it sort of evolve to this place as you put it out there, got feedback? Can you tell us like how you got to this end goal here? Well, you know, when I started the channel, because I had had, I'd already built a business. I actually, I'm a business builder. You know, it's like I've had a all these, I've never really worked for anyone else. So building a little business that's going to sustain, you know, sustain me with income is I can do that. I tell people you could drop me onto a desert island in a foreign country and with 30 days I'd have a business, you know. <laughs> I believe so, what I just knew that having an email list was really important and I started it from the very beginning. However, I didn't do the weekly promotion, and I only do one video a week now. It's Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. So the email newsletter comes out at 9 a.m. The first line in that email newsletter is that video, that Sunday morning video. So it's a it's a tradition with my viewers. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time, that's Kimberly time. And they get their copy, and they read the newsletter, and then they watch the video. And it's just a comfort thing. For them at this point, it's a comfort thing for me too because I know we're connecting. So I started this email list and I didn't really promote it, but it kept growing. It was just in the description box. And then I thought, you know what, I really would like to build that list. And then after the list got pretty doggone big, I thought, what can I do to thank these women? What can I do to give them something really cool because they've stuck with me and they joined with me and they show up and they watch the videos. And so I put together the boss event. It just sort of all came together within a day. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. And here's the funny thing. I really just wanted to give my viewers something special, a better discount on products that I really, really love and use all the time. But the, what's happened on the back end is that it's ended up being an enormous income for me because of the affiliate commissions from those months. And so it it was kind of one of those things, doing something really good, and then you end up getting rewarded. So that's how it worked out. Well, and I noticed, do you do a live stream in tandem with this I thought I saw some live streaming that you do once a month. Yeah. What is that about? I actually announced the boss event on a live stream. Okay, cool. So I announce it. I don't let anybody know what's coming. I announce it on a live. I answer questions. And so that's how the viewers find out what the boss event is going to be for that month. And then all month long, it's in the number two spot in the email newsletter that comes out on Sunday morning. So it's really good for the companies because they're in front of my viewers for an entire month with a really great sale. And it gives the viewers time to get to know the company. And a lot of times I'll have the owner of the company on during the month to talk about their product line. And that's an important point is all the boss event companies, they are not corporations. They are this person with a passion like Garrett, who has Birch Boys Chaga, he has a mushroom company. 
he started farming chaga with his grandmother and built a business. And he had this business like by the time he was 23. He is so knowledgeable about his particular product line and such a great guy and such an ethical owner. And I have him on to talk about his company and everybody loves him because he's cool and he's smart and he puts together a great product that's in a great price point and people can feel good about it. So it kind of has been an opportunity to give a great sell to my viewers and to really promote companies that don't have the dollar spend that something like L'Oreal or Procter & Gamble is going to have. But people can find out about this incredible company that has this great product with all this integrity and great customer service. And you can call up and talk to the owner. So I really enjoy that part of it. It's been kind of a thrill for me. Are you at the point now where companies are asking you to be a part of this boss event every month? Yeah, but it's invitation only. (laughs) (laughs) I love how selective you can be. This is amazing. Yeah. And they have, you know, it really has to be something special because, you know, my reputation is going behind it, you know, so. Okay. So these are lots of moving pieces now. I know that you started your channel in 2019. At what point, I would imagine that you have some help and support staff now. Can you tell us when you started doing that and and who you have helping you out these days? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually brought on an assistant Oh, probably two and a half years ago. And her role with me has continued to grow. Now, here's an interesting thing, ladies. If you're thinking about being a remote assistant, this gal, if she left me, I would fly to Wyoming and end up on her porch begging her to come back. (laughs) She is so good. I have never met her. Oh my gosh, really? Really, she works behind the scenes and she is incredible. She's one of those little magical ninjas that I'll send her an email like hey can you handle this thing and it's like 10 moving parts and I don't hear anything and then three days later it's like done oh okay (laughs) she's fabulous she's wonderful so I have a almost she's works for me not full-time but she has little kids so I think it's as much as she needs to work so she came on she's fabulous And I also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a completely other YouTube channel on top of the Pretty Over 50 channel. So now she works managing Pretty Over 50 and she works managing the other channel. Plus I have a full-time editor and he lives in Europe and he edits all the channels for Pretty Over 50 and all the, uh, or all the videos for Pretty Over 50 and the videos for the other channel as well. So I have a team, and I spend so much time thanking them profusely, day in and day out, because they really make my life possible, and I, I, I just adore both of them. Okay, what is your second channel? Because I noticed you had a couple of channels where you dub in Spanish and Portuguese, maybe? Wait, Spanish yeah, and... actually, okay. yeah. That was a company that contacted me, so they managed um, the channels in Spanish and Portuguese for mm-hmm. both of my channels. Okay. The the other channel is a completely different topic that is just a personal passion of mine. It's called Journey to the New Earth. And the tagline for that is exploring the true nature of our reality. Okay. So it's a very different channel than the beauty channel. But surprisingly, I have some of my viewers watch both. So interesting. Okay. I love it. So you have a little, a little passion project too. And I love it. We have yeah. to, I have two, we have two YouTube channels. Yes, <laughs> so funny. This, one, this one's our passion project. This yes, year. I this is, yeah. And um, it's been fun and very different building, yeah. building a podcast out compared to building a YouTube channel. So I love right. that you're just got your hands everywhere. I love it. Yeah. And I'll tell you the beauty channel pays for the passion project. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, yes, yes. we understand that. <laughs> This channel's a little bit in debt, but we are monetized. So one day we're going to pull out of that. Okay. I have another um, question that is, I think, a strategic question. I can't wait to hear your answer to this because as I was watching your videos, I'm like doing the math and I'm like, wait, when she started her channel, she was in her 60s. So why pretty over 50? Um, Was that intentional because you knew people were searching over 50 more or did you just think it sounded better? Was it what was the intentionality behind naming the channel? 
It was marketing. It was understanding how a business grew. Yeah. <laughs> I knew, well, it's smart. Yeah, I knew that over 50 was going to be the age range. And I was 60 when I started my channel. A lot of people said, why didn't you name it Pretty Over 60? And it's like, well, there's a difference between my chronological age and a, and a business plan. Mm -hmm. So the business plan was over 50 because I think that that's kind of the age that women start thinking I'm going to have to be doing things differently, mm -hmm. you know, with my skin and my makeup. Yeah. I love that. I know. I think it's so <laughs> smart. And we both thought that was yeah. why, but we just wanted, we're curious. Well, at first I had to find out that she was in her 60s. And when yeah. I saw that in the video, I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? And it was just <laughs> yeah. a compute. So, well, while we have you here, I mean, I feel like we have to ask you, what is the number one thing that someone over 50 should be doing to their skin? Like, what's the number one thing that you have to do? Oh, my gosh. There's, that's a, that's a good question. It's a little tough to answer because so much happens to our skin over the years that give our eyes the subtle cue that you're older. And I really try to work with how to, first of all, make your skin look brighter and fresher. Doesn't matter if you have wrinkles or crinkles, but if your skin looks healthy, it's really going to improve things. And then there's some little magic tricks that you can do with makeup as well. Kind of fool the eye into people thinking that, oh, you're just a little bit more perky and youthful than maybe you really are. But I would say um, for skincare, I would say exfoliating and moisturizing. For makeup, blend, blend, blend. Because at this age... We have so many wrinkles and crinkles and doodads going on. The last thing you want is your color cosmetics not to be blended in. So ladies, blend, 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 and then blend some more. <laughs> I love that you just said that word because that was like my favorite thing when I was watching one of your videos last night. You were just talking about the difference of your skin and all that. It was like a 30-minute one, and I watched the whole thing, and you were like, yeah, you know, I started getting those doodads on my neck. I was like, the doodads. <laughs> Like I know exactly what she to beware the doodads. Yeah. The doodads. You need that if you don't have merch about like beware of the doodads. <laughs> I, I probably that's such a good. That's probably going to show up in a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you don't mind talking percentages, we don't have to talk dollar amounts, but percentages. I would love to know the breakdown of your income from AdSense, and it sounds to me like affiliate marketing. I'm going to guess is your number one income source. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no one is going to get rich off of YouTube AdSense. No one is. It's definitely um, affiliate marketing for me. People who buy the products that, you know, I show on my channel, which is good for them because they get a discount mm -hmm. generally. And so they're saving money. And, you know, I'm getting a little bit of income from each sale that helps me just continue to do it. And then, of course, the boss event is... Um, important and also sponsor videos. So it it really, I think to have a successful YouTube channel, it requires the decision that you're going to be in charge of your business. You're not going to let YouTube define you. And for instance, I'm, I am just getting ready to release a skincare class. And the reason I finally filmed a skincare class is because what I found out after five years on YouTube is it didn't matter how many times I explained how to manage mature skin. A lot of ladies just weren't getting the information. I mean, they're cooking dinner or they're driving or, you know, it's in the background. They're not getting the information. And I finally thought, you know what? I, I recognize that because of the comments I would get, you know, years later, hundreds of YouTube videos, they're not getting the information. So I thought, I'm going to put together a skincare class, and I'm going to promote it on Facebook and Instagram, and it's the same information that's on my YouTube channel, but it's packaged up. And so there are going to be certain women that that really works for them. They, you know, they're going to buy this class, they're going to sit there, they're going to watch, you know, video one, and then video two, and then video three, and it's going to come with this incredible list of products that's affordable and easy to find and everything's going to be all packaged up. Well, my guess is that that skincare class is going to be a nice 
another income stream. And if I had relied on YouTube to push all my videos out so I could reach the same number of people, I'd be, I'd be waiting all my life for that. It's just not going to happen. So I, you know, take charge of your own business, figure out what can I do that's going to really serve your audience and put it together and, you know, create another income stream for your business. That way you're in charge of your income, not sitting around waiting for YouTube to hopefully click that little algorithm magic button. And yeah. This, yeah. We'll yeah. From there. Well, and I imagine, I know your niche is very saturated. I know there's a ton of people out there, but it is a huge one. And I know for sponsorships and affiliates, it's one of the best ones to be in. Um, and I don't know if you know this information, but like for me, my DIY um, is it has a pretty high CPM. So uh, with YouTube, like they advertisers pay around twenty to twenty five dollars for uh, per thousand views on my channel. So I roughly I'm supposed to get half of that. It doesn't seem like I'm getting half of that anymore. It seems like I'm probably getting about twelve dollars per a thousand views. Do you know that breakdown for your channel? You know it. It varies. It's about twenty, twenty-five. Okay. And remarkably, there are some makeup brands that if you just do a video on it, it's gonna it's gonna go a lot higher. But I agree with you. Um, I noticed that what I get paid out from YouTube doesn't seem to be consistent with <laughs> the views I get. Yeah, I think it back in the day it was supposed to be sixty percent, and it if it's 50% these days, it's for, that's pretty good. So yeah. I don't know where what has changed and where the disconnect is. Well, I don't know if it's YouTube premium people yeah. versus YouTube TV people. I don't know. Well, and also, I did, I ran the numbers. I think, and I don't want to be a, a curmudgeon about this, but I, th I do think that YouTube fudges the numbers here and there. And I'll tell you why. Because when I moved to Aiken, South Carolina, I was on the West Coast. I moved to Aiken, South Carolina, a tiny little town. And I had so many people contact me and say, oh, my gosh, I've been watching your channel for years. I live in Aiken. And I started counting the number of women who lived in Aiken that said they'd been watching my channel for a long time. And I compared that to the population of Aiken. And then if you extrapolate that that percentage out, the numbers would be a whole lot different than the numbers on the screen. <laughs> so I think that there's some little number magic going on somewhere. We'll never know. But you've turned it, you've taken it and be like, hey, whatever I'm getting, I'm getting. And it's a huge marketing juggernaut for all these other things that you're doing and creating yeah. community. So yeah, I yeah. think it's the best space for creating community. It is a good place for creating community, and I think that, you know, one of the things with YouTube, and I'm being aware of it now, or I'm thinking about it, is it's always going to change. The platform is going to change. Their focus is going to change. So staying on top of it and being nimble with your business and not having just that one stream of income, I think, is a really smart move right now. Absolutely. And I'm curious because I had noticed on your channel you've kind of um, expanded out into some more videos uh, beyond just beauty and skincare. Like I noticed you had some about living alone and um, you talked a lot about you have a big spirit of adventure and you've moved around a lot. Is Are you going to be in the future introducing more of that type of content, like lifestyle stuff into your channel? Is that Or is that just kind of one-offs when you have gotten a lot of questions about a particular subject and you put up a video. Yeah. I think that because the of the loyalty of my viewers, it really kind of has morphed into more of a lifestyle channel. And I'll do more lifestyle videos when I kind of am more energetic or have more time. And it is, I think it's important to touch on those different aspects for women my age because, you know, beauty is part of what we do at this age, but it's certainly not all of it. So I definitely want to touch on those other areas. And one of the focuses for me is healthy living, is how do you stay nimble and energetic and capable and flexible and 
work on your mobility, you know, as we get older. And, you know, I'm going to be 70 doing YouTube. So I need to talk about how my life works that I'm able to do all the things that I do. And I think that that all is important information and information that I really want to share because it impacts the quality of our lives. So clearly YouTube is is your juggernaut is a thing that is pushing, you know, all that has helped you create all these other things. But you do have a following on Instagram, too. How much time are you spending on Instagram? And are you creating completely different content over there? Or is it just like, I'll just throw up whatever I have on there to kind of supplement YouTube and help all these other things work? Oh, my gosh, I'm so busted. (laughs) it's okay there's no wrong answer well you know here's the thing it's so funny I almost never post on Instagram and there was there was maybe a flurry maybe two and a half years ago that I did some makeup videos or something I'm terrible at Instagram so nobody okay don't go running over there looking for me because you're going to be so disappointed and yet I look and I've got all these followers (laughs) and I don't know why what I I'll, every now and then when I'm out kayaking, I might post a little video. I posted a video because I was disappointed in some organic strawberries I bought. I mean, <laughs> like, I am so not tactical with Instagram, and I'm so respect and admire, and I'm so impressed with people who are. So I'm not one of them, and I have no idea why I have all those followers. I really don't. <laughs> But I love that because uh, I'm a person that when Reels came out, I was like, well, let me, I just, to keep myself active in this and to not suffer from burnout, I like to tackle new things. It's just my personality. I like to figure them out and whatever. And uh, so I have TikTok and I have Instagram and I do a lot of reposting, but then there's some times where I'm like, no, but I want to do da, da, And it's just like too much. So I, and I'm kind of like pulling back and pruning things off. And at the end of the day, the thing that I want to spend the time on and the thing that I see the most value in is my YouTube channel. Yeah. So I love that you're saying that. That's like, it's yeah. great for some people and it works for some people. But for me, I know that this is my lane and this is where like, I'm going to get the most out of my efforts. So I think that's really refreshing to hear. And when you want to show up over there, you can. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, and you're showing people that you don't have to do all the things. Yeah. To be make it a full time yeah. income and to yeah. be successful because I think the lie a lot of people believe is that you have to do it all. Yeah. To be successful as no a creator. Do it all. But yeah. I, I just love that we have talked so much about email marketing mm-hmm. because it's not sexy and it's not it's not visible. It's not something that people are gonna be like, Oh, well, she has five hundred, you know, thousand people on her email list it's not a vanity metric like instagram followers are like subscribers are when people come to your channel they're like oh my gosh she has over three hundred thousand subscribers she must be a big deal but like you can't really tout this email marketing but it is a huge piece of your business and it's a huge piece of your community so i love that we got to peel the curtain back and see behind the scenes there because i think this is going to get people's wheels turning a lot definitely has my wheels turning it has my wheels turning for Cypress Room. Yeah. Like if we're wanting to create community, that's like the number one thing that we should be doing um, so that people can have that touch point with us every week. If they don't have time to sit down and watch our hour, hour and a half podcast that week, we can give them the highlights. We can share our favorite things like we do every week. So you've definitely got my wheels turning. I know. And I'm curious to know, do you have other women your age coming to you as a resource? Like, You're living this full, vibrant life in your later years. And I would think that that would be such an inspiration to other women your age. Do you find that other women are asking you questions? How are you doing this? Like, and being sparked to start their own thing, whatever that might be. Yeah, I definitely, I get a lot of comments and a lot of emails from my viewers and subscribers that say, you've really encouraged me. I was afraid to do that, or I didn't think I could, but you've given me a lot of encouragement. And I think that that, that's important. That's so important. And that's one of the reasons that I have expanded my channel into sort of lifestyle. And you gals aren't there yet, but I am. And there seems to be a point in life where women... I'm just talking about women because that's what I know. Those are my viewers. They decide they're old. And then things start shutting down. And I just haven't made that decision yet. 
I just haven't decided I'm old yet. And I really have not limited my activities or decided I can't do or shouldn't do. And that decision that I haven't decided I'm old yet gives other women the encouragement to keep going, keep doing, and deciding that they still can. Because, you know, you've heard this from your mothers and your grandmothers. I'm two years from 70. I don't feel any different than I felt when I was 29. I'm, I'm a little bit more educated and smarter and experienced. But as far as my place in the world and, and my feeling of being capable, it's no different. And so keeping that going for these women to give them an example, this is what I'm doing. And they maybe never thought about that, but if they added it, it could be a whole lot of fun. So that's, that's a huge motivation for me is letting women know we're not done yet. I think it's such a beautiful message. It is a few. And, and even if we're not at your age yet, we are definitely in those transition seasons. And um, my body is not responding to things the way that it used to. So I can already see that it's beginning. And so just preparing my heart for that and preparing just my mind for that. I love that we have a resource like you to just be like, hey, this is coming eventually. So let's let's see where you're at. Let's check in. Let's not be so busy that like all of one day we're like, oh, my gosh, my kids are out of the house and like what I don't, you know, so like I think it's good to just be just preparing our heart for those season shifts. And as yeah. women, I think it is challenging. I think it's different than being a man. And like you said, I, I'm only a woman, so I can only talk about <laughs> my experience. But I just think about all the different roles and different hats that I've had to wear as a woman, especially like being a mother. Um, so I'm excited for this next season and just look at look to you as just like an encouraging, positive person out there in this space. And I'm just so feel just so blessed. Like p social media gets a bad rap sometimes, but I love that it helped me get to sit down and talk to you and and know that you're out here just like making a difference and that we have that opportunity to just put ourselves out there and be that positive change that we want to see out in the world. So yeah. we just want to celebrate you. Yeah. I think what you're doing is so amazing. It really is. And our prayers just for like longevity for you and the success of your other channel and for you to just keep going. And I think you're such a huge encouragement just to women in general. And I'm so excited to see how our audience and followers responds to meeting you if they haven't met you yet. Yes, this has and been so much fun. You ladies are charming and delightful. And <laughs> oh, so you're charming and you. delightful. <laughs> you are. I mean, when I first found your channel, I was like, wow, she is so beautiful and fun and spunky. And like, I want to be like that, you know, as I get older. And so I'm just so encouraged by you. And also that you are just kind of have that go get them attitude of it's never too late to start a new business mm -hmm. and that you really there was no fear about it either I think that is just amazing like that testimony of yep I knew this is what it was going to take and so I did it and you found success on the other side and that mm -hmm. is just so beautiful and we want to thank you for your yes today yes. because when we got the email back from your agent saying that you were going to do the interview we were just like jumping up and down yes. and so excited <laughs> And so we just appreciate you taking the time for, you know, a smaller startup company. Um, oh, I think that says absolutely. a lot about your character. Yes, and yes. we just want to thank you and honor you for your time today. But yes. we cannot let you go without sharing your favorite thing. This is like my f my most excited I've been about sharing our favorite <laughs> things because I can't wait to hear what you're going to share because I'm probably okay. going to buy it immediately. <laughs> okay. This, this is such a great product. I'm not kidding you. And it was developed by one of the best people on the planet. Absolutely. A man by the name of Dr. Zach Bush developed this product. And I'm going to tell you about it in just a minute, but I want to tell you about Dr. Bush first. He's a medical physician, a doctor, who became so closely aligned with his patients that what he found out was the majority of the issues that his patients were coming to him for had to do with the food supply in our country. And he has become a passionate warrior for clean food, clean soil, clean eating, clean air, clean water. And Dr. Zach Bush, and you can find him on YouTube, is such a leader in this area and such a man with passion and compassion. 
and he started a company called Intelligence of Nature. Now, that's the, the, the name they have now. It wasn't the name that I knew when, when I first learned about this product. But the product is called Ion Biome, and, and it stands for Intelligence of Nature Biome. And that product really, of all the products I have talked about on my channel, no one's even close. I have had more people email me and comment that it absolutely changed their life. Ion Biome really deals with gut health. And so if you have any kind of leaky gut or inflammation or IBS or any kind of issue that you feel like is a systemic issue throughout your body that you feel like you're, you know, your metabolism isn't working correctly, that you're just puffy, you wake up with those bags under your eyes or your ankles feel tight, that's often a, a symptom of leaky gut. And I am biome really, really deals with gut health. I've been taking it for, oh my gosh, I started it even before I started my channel. And it has completely, you know, started the health journey for me and has changed the lives of so many of my viewers. So it's I am bio okay. from Dr. Zach Bush. Now is it is it drops? Is it powder? What it's a liquid. Okay. And you just take a little it doesn't taste like anything. And you just take a little shot of it. I do it two or three times a day. And it's magic. It really is magic in a bottle. I'm going to have to look into this. I know. <laughs> I, I could hear your ears perking up from over here about it. <laughs> the chronic stomach issues person. Here. This might be, so this I might need be to the look change. into it. For I'm sure. Sure. Okay, I had skincare prepared because I knew we were meeting with you. But now I'm a little terrified to say it because I'm like, what if Kimberly is going... But it's okay. I want you to speak the truth because it's something that I like. And if there's a better option for me or something else I can do, then you you can be honest with me. It's a safe space. And I've shared this on here before, but something that I've been using for a year that is very affordable, that was very weird. And I was like, I don't think I want to use this, but now I feel like I can't live without it is snail mucin. Oh, that and I put so good. Okay, good. <laughs> so I get the the kind. It's off of Amazon, and it goes on deal quite often. Usually on their deal days, it goes on deal. And I think I got mine for twelve dollars, and it's a bottle like this big. And I still am probably like three quarters of the way through it. But once I, I didn't use it consistently at first because I'm like, this is weird. The texture is weird. I don't know. But I consistently use it at night, um, before I do my lotion and before I do, um just like retinol and things like that throughout the week. And I just love it. And I have noticed like when my kids get sunburned, I put it on their shoulders. Their sunburn heals faster. Um, if I get any type of cut like uh, on my face, like it helps reduce some of that like dark marking stuff. And I really enjoy it now. So my snail me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a hero product. And that's actually what I put on my skin after I do my weekly peel. Because it's so nourishing and healing for the skin. So you want to do your peels at night because okay. your skin only heals at night. Your body only heals at night when you're sleeping. So I do my peel at night and then I put on snail mucin and a moisturizer and go to bed. I'm so excited. Oh, I did yeah, too. So now I'm excited. Um, my favorite product, I just had a birthday recently and my daughter got me the De Natasha Denona I Need a Warm Palette. It's a new one, mm -hmm. and it is gorgeous. I'll put a picture up here on the screen, but it's like all a bunch of mattes and a few shimmers of like neutral, warm shades, and I always love Natasha Denona shadows. I got my first palette. I did the I Need a Nude palette that I got, I think, last year, maybe for my birthday, mm -hmm. and I loved it so much. It's cool tone nudes. And so this one is Warm Tone Nudes, and I absolutely love it. It is gorgeous. And, yeah. That's and if you favorite. need tips on how to, to do your eye makeup, head over to Kimberly's channel because yeah. she had some great eye tutorials that I was watching. Last yeah, night. It's, yeah. Different. it's different when you have crinkly wrinklies. Up I there. know. And <laughs> I have put it, too. So I, like, I am, I'm watching your stuff, girl. I'm, pre I'm preparing myself. And honestly, like, there were tons of things that I'm not over 50, but they're, you know, I'm, I'm creeping up on it. My, my, yeah. Maggie just had a birthday, and mine is coming soon. And um, mid-40s, mid-40s, mid we'll say. Mid-40s. And so 50 is right around the corner. So I am just loving taking this information from you. And I definitely need to go watch your skincare 
stuff and probably would be interested in your class too so to make sure I'm doing my steps correctly because I don't do peels yet and I would love to incorporate that into my skincare so I'm going to be checking that out on your channel as well yeah it, it'll change the it'll change your skin doing a weekly peel Oh my gosh, this was so great, Kimberly. Yeah, Thank okay. you so much. We appreciate you. We will leave uh, her information down in the description box for her channel, as well as her newsletter. I'm going to sign up for her newsletter today. So make sure you check that out. And the boss events, we're going to be there for the boss events. Yes, yeah. we are. We are. So if you don't already follow Kimberly, go and follow her. Sign up for that newsletter so you can get all of the boss specials delivered straight to your inbox. If you don't follow us, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit those notifications so you know every time we upload a new podcast. We'd love for you to follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well. And we do have a newsletter that we started. So you know what? We're going to link that in the description box because we're going to get that. We're going to resurrect. I know. Thing. I feel encouraged to resurrect it. We're going to we're going to have something for you eventually. So sign up today. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great job, ladies. Thank you so much. This is a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And thank you listeners for joining us today. We'll be back again soon with another podcast and we'll see you next time.